Hi everyone, um, welcome back to a quick reminder video for English literature. Um, we're looking at paper two today, of course. Um, so I'm going to give you a few tips and talk you through the exam. So some things to look out for on this paper then. So my version isn't bound or stapled, but this is exactly how yours will look. Now on paper two, modern text and poetry. Um, Sam there are three sections in the paper, as you'll see in a moment. Your first section is an inspector calls. All right, so we're aiming to use somewhere between 45 and 50 minutes for that question. And then you've got poetry, power and conflict, those anthology poems that you studied, 45 minutes roughly there. And then you'll be looking at unseen poetry. And that, that section is divided into two. And we're recommending that you spend around 30 to 35 minutes on the first question. And then there's a short second question where you compare. And I would say 10 minutes is adequate for that. And you want to build in some time to check your work as you go along. So if we open up the paper now and just have a look at what we've got inside. You should have a contents page to begin with. Now, when I did the last video for paper, literature paper one, um, there were one or two of you who decided to answer lots of questions when you only had to answer two. So please, please, please don't try and do something silly here. Um, it's not in your best interests at all. You need to answer the correct questions. All right. So you're going to be answering on an inspector calls either question one or two, all right, you will choose. Then you're going to be answering on power and conflict poetry, which is down here, and it's going to be question 26. And then you're going to answer two questions on unseen poetry, so 27.1 and 27.2. So by the end of this two and a quarter hour exam, you should have answered four questions. So if we have a little look inside the paper now, you'll see that for in the inspector calls, which is over here, the first set of questions, easy to remember, you're given a choice of two questions. You must answer one of those questions. Do not try and answer both. All right, you want to answer one and you want to be spending the full allocated time, 45 minutes, remember, do your timings on this question. Okay, so if we look at this paper, it's a 2019 paper, uh, we've got one question here on theme, selfishness and its effects. Or there was an option to answer on a, char a character question, Sheila, but it's linked to themes, learning important lessons and about herself and society. All right. So whatever comes up, you're going to choose one of those questions. Don't spend too long thinking about it. Come up with one, one that you're confident you can write on. And you're going to uh, begin planning uh, and responding to that. So you could do the questions in a different order. So you could start with poetry, um, perhaps if that's one that you want to get out of the way first to give you perhaps some, some confidence or to leave extra time for another section. But the advice, general advice, is to follow section A into section B into section C. So we're going to look at some top tips for each of these sections, but I'm going to talk you through the paper structure first in full. So after you finish your inspector calls question, you might decide to look at the questions first as well. You're going to skip past all of the texts here that you've not studied until you get to question 26 in section B. All right, please don't try and answer on plays that you don't know or you've not studied with us. You need to follow the inspector calls into power and conflict into unseen poetry. So there's going to be lots of pages in your exam booklet that are just irrelevant and a complete waste of paper, arguably. 
um, but they're, they're printed for everyone. If we come to section B here, you will see that the first section B question is going to be on love and relationships. Don't freak out. The questions here are the question here is on a section of the poetry anthology that we have not studied. All right, it's this question now um, that we're interested in on page 19 here, but it may be on a different, slightly different page number for you. Um, it's question 26, and it gives you a list of the 15 poems you've studied. Now, that list is useful because you might have forgotten. Uh, it's not a memory test of, of, of what you've studied. So you're going to choose and use from that list later on once you've seen the question. All right. So the question in the 2019 paper was on the poem War Photographer, all right, which you should be familiar with in case it comes up. Um, and the question is, compare how poets present the ways that people are, that people are affected by war in War Photographer and in one other poem from Power and Conflict. So you might decide now, having seen the question, to have a look back at, sorry, list of poems and think, okay, which of these poems are about people being affected by war and which are not? Well, maybe the Charge of the Light Brigade might be a ch possible choice. Exposure certainly works. Um, it may be the bayonet charge and remains and poppies and war photographer also feel like decent choices. Okay, um, and probably your teacher has taught you to look at, carefully at some of the poems that are maybe most useful for this exam. And I think any one of those poems works. War photographer compares nicely with remains, so you might decide that that's your option and then you can start your plan. All right. Um, so we'll look at some top tips for poetry, power and conflict, in just a moment. So the final section of the exam, section C, is called Unseen Poetry. And you should be familiar with the format. A reminder, though, um, if you need one. You're given a poem here for question 27.1, if you can see that. And 27.1 um, will give you a focus. So in this poem... How does the poet present ideas about living a happy and contented life? All right. Now, this is a poem you've not read before, a poem that you don't know very well, or don't know at all, sorry. <laughs> um, and it'll be maybe confusing to you, or you might not fully understand it. But what you've got here is you've got a guiding question that allows you to think about happy and contented life. All right. So really... What you need to do here is you need to just show the examiner that you've read the poem carefully and that you've selected three or four good quotations that show us something about a happy and contented life. Okay, and we'll go through some more top tips in a second. So that's Unseen 27.1, 24 marks. So you're going to be looking at writing a decent essay for that question. And then if you thought it was over, it's not, because you've got one final question to go, and that's 27.2. Um, and that gives you a further poem, normally a little bit shorter, um, but on a similar theme to the first one in this section. So they're both about ideas about how to live your life, and the question is going to be to compare how... Um, the methods the poets use to present those ideas are similar or different. All right, uh, And this question is only worth eight marks, and eight marks on methods and meaning. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean by that when we return. So, just to conclude, I'm going to give you a couple of tips for each of the sections that might be helpful, um, just to jog your memory. So, for an inspector calls, one of the things students tend to do that we need you to not do is to make sure that you acknowledge that this is a play. All right, which means that it's constructed and written for an audience. And this specific play, an inspector calls, clearly has a message. All right, and that message, I think we agree, is that... Um, looking after the most vulnerable in society 
is something we should all aspire to. Okay? And the message of the play is exactly that. The inspector is a voice piece for priestly socialist views. So we can talk about socialism. And the inspector there is the vehicle. Whereas the capitalist views more money, lower costs, higher prices is embodied mainly by Mr. Burling, but also supported by his wife and Gerald Croft as well. So this is a play that has an audience um, that Priestley really wants to address to explore these ideas. Okay, So it's really important um, that you don't treat the characters like real people. In fact, the, the play itself doesn't feel realistic at all. This is a play with a strong message that comes from a, pol a specific political place. All right? And whether you choose the character question or you choose the theme question, whichever question you like best, you'll be able to make that point. For power and conflict poetry, the best thing to do here is to make sure that you are comparing poems that work well together. All right, and that you answer the question very, very carefully because it will be a serious rubric infringement if you simply just write all you know about the poem or poems that you've got in front of you. So you want to be answering the question clearly and you want to make sure that your quotations and your explanation and the context points you make all serve the question. So this, I think for power and conflicts, maybe more than most, you need to make sure that your plan is clear at the start. For unseen poetry, for 27.1, where you're writing about one poem, remember, make sure you underline the focus of the question and then you need to read the poem thoroughly and what if you don't understand it well you're going to select three to four best quotations that link to the ideas in the question all right and for each of those quotations you're going to make sure that you write as much as you possibly can. Don't panic if you don't understand the poem. Rereading the poem slowly, methodically, will normally give you the handle on it. But if even if you're struggling, you will find that you will have quotations that will serve the purpose. Okay? For 27.2, that short eight mark question, all you need to do is basically write three P paragraphs. Because you're comparing, for example, simile 1 from one poem and simile 2. And you're showing how they are similar or different. You might decide to identify an example of a specific word or a group of words. All right? So you might look at repetition, for example, um, in 1 versus an example of repetition in 2. And then you might find that you get contrast in one and contrast in two. Okay, and all of these points need to be linked by the meaning created. So that, I hope, is helpful. That is um, the whole exam. We need you to keep writing till the end and keep adding in um, and making use of the time properly. Um, good luck. We know that you can do it. You had a strong paper one. This time round, we need to make sure that we answer every question um, and aim for um, full paragraphs, a couple of sides each question at least, um, and really squeeze as many marks out of this exam as possible. Good luck.